Hello, welcome to Unbearable. Uh, this uh, this video I'm doing a review of a real, the Riddle Master of Head by Patricia, Patricia A. McKillop. Uh, that is book one of our Riddle Master uh, trilogy. Okay. So when I was a little kid, uh, reading was my outlet. You know, uh, I first read The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit when I was four and read it quite often since then, over 150 times The Lord of the Rings, to be honest, a little obsessive maybe, but I love it, you know. Um, and someone thought when I was a kid that locking me in a room full of books was punishment. It turned out it wasn't. It was a way to read a lot of books, you know. And uh, I created, I developed a long, a long love of fantasy and science fiction and horror and all sorts of stuff like that, you know. Um, when I was six or seven, somewhere in there, uh, my aunt's hu a husband, he, he was consolidating his books, so he gave me a huge amount of science fiction and fantasy books. And in there was uh, several books by Patricia and McKill, the what became called the Riddle Master Trilogy. I was, this was in about 1983 or 4 I had got these books, you know. And uh, the series... That is, when Patricia McKillop wrote it, she never really named it the so-and-so trilogy. Um, it's just become known as either the Riddle of Stars trilogy or the Riddle Master of Head trilogy or just the Riddle Master trilogy over the year, depending on which omnibus it gets published in now because it tends to be published as an omnibus uh, almost everywhere you get it. Um, I'm going to hold up my science fiction. This is from my when I was back in the science fiction book club from, I don't know, when I was like 5 to like 20. Uh, this is the omnibus edition that I got back then. Um, you can see it's well worn. You know, I think it's from 1984, maybe. You know, but the initial version I've got were the three paperbacks, and they were well worn by my uncle. And I basically burnt those out reading them for the first couple of years until I got this, which has lasted a lot longer. Uh, so this video is a review of the first book in the the I want to call it the Riddle Master uh, uh, trilogy. Okay, uh, the first book is called the Riddle Master of Head. Uh, it was written by Patricia A. McKillop. She's still currently alive at 73, and she's still writing as far as I know. Um, we'll call up her uh, website, as a matter of fact. Uh, this is a picture, uh, picture of Miss, Miss McKillop. I think she was a little younger. Um, and here's her most recent book. Uh, here, here's her most recent book that was she wrote, uh, which is highlighted there. Um, she was born in 1948 in Salem, Oregon. She attended San Jose State University in California, and she ultimately got a Master of the Arts in English in 1973, which happened to be the year I was born. Uh, she's probably most well-known for our first full-length novel, which is called The Forgotten Beast of Eld. That was published in 1974. Uh, she won the World Fantasy Award in 1975 for that book. Uh, the World Fantasy Award, sorry if I mumbled there. Uh, ultimately, in, in 2008, the world, the, she won the, the career, basically the World Fantasy Award for Life Achievement from the same organization. Uh, the Riddle Master Trilogy was written between 1976 and 1979. The Riddle Master Pen was written, uh, was published in 1976. Air of Sea and Fire, which is book two, was published in 1977. And Harpist in the Wind, which is book three, was published in 1979. Um, now, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do any heavy spoilers uh, for this, at least for the review, my review of the first two books, of which this is the review of the first book. But when I review the third book, uh, probably in two weeks or so, um, give or take, um, excuse me, give or take, uh, then I'll probably have to do some spoilers in the first and second book at the very least. Okay. So what's a, here, I'll, here I'll give you a short summary for the main theme of this series, okay? Uh, Morgan of Head spell, uh, was born with two identities. On one hand, he was the firstborn and land heir to the island of Head in her fictional world she created. On the other hand, he was born with three stars on his forehead, the Star Bearer, a person who has been hinted at in legends of this land for over a thousand years. The Prince of Head, the bearer of the land rule after his father died young, relatively recently, and all the responsibility that power gave him, but also the bearer of the power and drive of being the star bearer, and that power of the star bearer makes him have a relentless, a relentless need to, to, for, to gain knowledge and to learn things and discover secrets, among, among other things, maybe a little more. Yeah. Um, so the Rudimentative Head is primarily about 
Morgan's inner conflict over these two names and therefore identities that he bears, and the notion that the star bearer, um, uh, the identity he fears, which is, will take away the, or destroy the identity that he loves, which is being the land ruler of head, the prince of head. Um, so let's uh, take a little look at the ma uh, map of the setting. Okay, so I'll give you an idea of, of where kind of where it takes place. You know. So you can see, uh, looking at what, what you see on screen now, um, it takes place in the south, kind of the southeast corner of a of an unknown continent. Um, as far as I know, Miss McKilp never wrote anything else in this world. Um, I haven't read everything she wrote. I wrote about. I've read about. Uh, I want to say I read four more books by her uh, back then. Probably, and she's probably one I want to revisit now. You know, I haven't. I haven't read. I haven't read the Forgotten Beast of Elle since I was like ten. Sorry about that interruption. Um, I had a little allergy attack, so I I could just call up a map of head, um, map of of the lands of the high one because they don't really have a name per se. She never names the continent or anything, and. Just to give an idea of, of the scope of, of of where things lay and where things are, you know, uh, who are our main characters? Uh, well, Morgan, I mentioned before, the Prince of Head and the Star Bearer, um, who I've described in detail. Then there's a character named Death, spelled D E T H. He is the harpist of the High One and the herald of the High One, who travels all the lands, acting as the voice of the High One and the will of this unseen ruler of all the lands, the High One. And then a character who is not seen in the first book, but she is mentioned quite a bit. Her name is Raiderly. Raiderly, she's the Princess of An, which is, you'll see on the bottom of the, nation, of the, of the map there, and the daughter of Matham of An, who rules those three countries, An, Hel, and Om. Uh, and she's the sister of Morgan's best friend, Rud of An. Uh, and Raider, Raiderly is the primary character, the main character in the second book of the series. So... So how would I character uh, characterize this the, the 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 first book? Well, it's very warm. Um, reading reading this reading it makes me feel like uh, I'm getting immersed in a book, like I'm sitting in front of you know uh, like a fireplace or on my couch with you know maybe nothing nothing going on and no no radio or nothing, just reading a book and or sometimes you know maybe sometimes I like to read on the beach. You can you sit on the beach, just have you your book and maybe a a drink or something, you know, and you're not being bothered. Just, just really get into it. That reading this makes you feel like you want to do that, you know. And then the setting itself is very immersive. Um, Patricia Minkoff does something masterfully that even a lot of good and almost some great authors really screw up all the time. Um, she she builds her world and and conveys a deep lore of it without hitting you with info dump after info dump after info dump lately. You know, some novels where a character, two characters will meet to talk about, you know, the ancient battle at Carhain or something like that. And then you get 17 pages of details of them just talking about the one. And, and, you, and no one would ever do that in any real sort of conversation, you know. Okay, so um, so, how, so, what, so how, do, how do I know if I like a particular book? Which means if I like it, I'm going to recommend it. I got kind of five criteria um, and the criteria relate to me being able to suspend my suspension of disbelief. So I'll call them up one by one and give you my, my thoughts on them, okay? And number one, at its conclusion, does the book make me wish that I had more to read, or does it make me wish that I had been shorter or that I'd wait, or I have wasted my time? So I think this one's pretty self-explanatory. You've heard a saying, it's better to make you wish... You make make you wish uh, wish for more, you know, or that so make you wish someone had stayed lo uh, stayed longer rather than make you think they had stayed or stayed there. Welcome, the same type of thing. So when I read this book, I definitely wanted to read more. I wanted to read more. I mentioned before the immersive setting and all that. I, I wanted a little more. I wanted more about the setting and whatever. And had she done more, may I don't know. In this particular book, it might have felt uh, the, uh, too long, but she did just the right amount that made me want more. You know, which is critical. So that's a definite plus. So what's the next criteria I will judge it by? Do I hate the portrayal of the primary characters? This doesn't mean do I hate or love the primary characters. Okay, 
The, the example I always give is the movie Die Hard, uh, which I think almost everyone has seen, you know, the greatest Christmas film of all time. Um, everyone loves John McClane, and everyone loves Hans Gruber. Not that you think Hans Gruber is the greatest guy in the world. You know he's evil, and you, but you love the, the way um, the, uh, oh, his name escapes me right now, but he just passed away, the actor, a couple years ago. The way he portrayed Hans Gruber, um, you wanted Hans to get his just desserts. You wanted Hans to, to be killed in some horrible fashion. He was evil, you know. So they put, so they portrayed them well. In this in this novel, all of our main characters and all, and all of our secondary characters in this novel are portrayed very well. And you, I don't hate them. I love the portrayal. Okay, what's our next criteria? Did the writer annoy me with moronic writing gimmicks like ending every single chapter on a cliffhanger or never fully resolving plot threads just to build a fake sense of mystery? This one can seem a little complex, um, but basically, uh, no, she didn't, that's for sure. But th this is the type of thing where, and you've read some, some, you've all probably read a book or seen a TV show where every single act in the show, every time it goes to a commercial break, there's a cliffhanger. That you build, uh, your expectations always built up and never fulfilled in that segment, you know. And if that happens, and when you have in a novel, what you what you kind of get is it, it, it gets repetitive. You know, you want to be sometimes you want a cliffhanger, sometimes you want a resolution, sometimes you want you know just a just a sort of fluff chapter, to sort of light in you know, the mood or whatever. You know, you want something different from these chapters, you so that the the feeling doesn't feel rote. You know. Um, and what's our next criteria? And criteria is this book preaching at me? I mean, to tell me I need to change something in my life as an actual plot. So the plot, the plot of a of anything, a TV show, a book, or whatever, um, should be a story. Okay, this doesn't mean that the story can't convey a strong moral message or a strong ethical message or a scientific truth or, or whatever. But the actual events in 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 the novel, book, or song even has to be a plot, a, a story that's being told to you. Uh, and the story is and the context of the story is what can convey this message if you want it there or not. Um, some people don't like that at all, have story have, have any sort of, you know, real world messaging or whatever. The point is if if this message, the soul is the actual plot, you know, that's what preaching at me and I to me, that's a turn off. I don't want to read or watch anything like that. And this this was definitely not like that. This 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 is the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. And number five, any deal breaker moment, meaning there's something so weird happens, something so weird happens, that I lose my suspension. This way, I can't get it back. Um, the best example I can give you for this for for, for someone who loves Tolkien and loves the Lord of the Rings and the Silmarillion and Hobbit and all the stuff he wrote, um, is in the movie The Return of the King. When the army of the undead appeared and became piranha-like, I actually stood up and laughed in the theater and almost walked out. That is not what happens in the book. Stark contrast. And only the fact that, I mean, really, I want to see Viggo Mortensen because he played out of should have won an Academy. I, did he win an Academy Award? I know the movie won. I don't know if he won it for it. He should have won an Academy Award for his, Academy Award for his portrayal of Aragorn in that, in that, all three of those films. So I stayed to see the end of it because I, I wanted to see how it got portrayed. But... That moment almost ruined those films for me. You know? um, so, in, in, that, in that context, uh, how, did, how did I rate the book? Well, 10 out of 10. Uh, I kept my suspension of disbelief for this entire book. Even having read it over 20, this is my 20 something time reading this book, uh, if, you know, um, it draws me in every single time. So, uh, that's the end of the review of book one. Not too many spoilers, just a little bit of plot and theme, theme spoilers. I'll be able to do the same thing with the second book, because I said, and yeah, it's technically a spoiler, but um, Raider Lee is the main character of the second book. So, I'll be able to do the same type of review without going into too many details for the second book. For the third book, I have to cover spoilers for the first two, just a bit. Okay. Um, so, if you like my review... Uh, hit a thumbs up. If you dislike it, hit the thumbs down. Uh, I have an Amazon affiliate link below to this book, my first ever one, if you are uh, uh, reviewing. 
So if you like it, maybe buy the book through Amazon, give me a little support. Uh, if not, you don't have to. Um, subscribe if you like it. This has been Unbearable73. Uh, I'm, I'm out of here. Have a good day.